fright at a funeral. Come on, Jer. Let's go home. It's late. Most of the work is already done. There's not much going on right now, I said to my husband for the third time. It seemed like I was coming back every two or three hours to check if we could go home. I still want to hang out for a bit, Jer said. For what? I'm tired. We're gonna be back tomorrow anyway, I shouted. Some of the men at the table stopped their conversations and looked up. I could also feel eyes on me from others around the room. I didn't want to cause a scene or embarrass Jer, but he was totally being a jerk. I've been helping with food prep and cooking since the first day of the funeral. I understand we have to show respect and support for the family, but this was beyond that. At this point, Jer was just socializing with all his buddies, which was what he has been doing all day yesterday and today. Frustrated, I tried my best to keep my composure and said in the calmest way possible, If you're not going home, I'm calling my sister to pick me up. You can go home by yourself. Give me about 15 more minutes to say bye to all the guys. I glanced at my phone. It was 12.10 a.m. You got 15 minutes or else I'm calling my sister, I told him. Then I walked back to my seat. The building housing the funeral could have been an event center for how big it was. The casket was kept at the back of the biggest area of the building. There were chairs lined up near the entrance almost all the way to the back. Near the front of the casket were the drum and the clean player during the funeral ritual. The wall on the left from the entrance to the back of the room formed a hallway where the last row of chairs stopped near the casket. The hallway led outside through a pair of double doors. Within the hallway were the men and women's bathrooms. I scare easily, and no matter how many funerals I've been to, I've always been too much of a chicken to look upon the dead. So I sat toward the entrance in a row far away from the casket, alongside the few women still there who were just as tired as I was. I was starting to nod off when I heard a commotion coming from the hallway where the bathrooms were. I shot up to see what was going on. It was Mrs. Lai. She was crying hysterically, surrounded by a group of people who rushed to her aid. I made my way over to get a closer look. As I got there, I could smell the familiar scent of tiger balm wafting in the air. I leaned over someone's shoulder and saw the other women massaging Miss Lai's legs, arms, and shoulders. She was still crying and raving about seeing a ghost. Apparently, someone went into the bathroom and used the stall next to Miss Lai. When she glanced down at the gap on the bottom of the stall, she saw half a pair of Mrs. Ting's bird shoes. Those shoes were made especially to be worn by the dead. Miss Ting was the deceased lady whom the funeral was for. The others checked the bathroom as soon as she ran out, but saw no one else in there. Ms. Lai, are you sure that was Mrs. Ting you saw in there? Asked one of the ladies massaging her. Ms. Lai nodded, still crying. The white cloth of the bird shoes was unmistakable. I was there when her shoes were put on. I don't doubt the woman given the circumstances, but all bird shoes look pretty much identical. They're either blue or white with no design. There was no telling whose ghost it really was. Regardless of that, it was still spooky as hell. I felt a hand on my forearm and almost leapt out of my skin. I turned and saw that it was Jer. Let's go. We got to go now, Jer whispered. I said nothing and followed him out to the car. I was surprised word had already reached him. Now the jerk wanted to leave after I'd been telling him we should have left earlier. There was a part of me that wished it had been Jer who saw the ghost instead of Miss Lai. That would teach him. We didn't tell anyone that we were going home, because the Hmong believed if you do, then the ghost or spirit may be tempted to follow you there. You're not even supposed to mention home even amongst the people you're living with. What you are allowed to say to each other is, let's go, we're leaving, or something like, let's go to the store. Whatever you do, do not mention going home. Last I heard, Miss Lai was doing okay after the incident. I'm glad I've never experienced anything supernatural or paranormal, and I hope I never will.
who locked the door. Lee was visiting her parents on a Tuesday evening one day after work. Her dad, Dang, asked Lee if she could take him to the casino. He loved playing on the slot machines, and so did she, but it was a weeknight. So Lee told her dad she couldn't take him since she had to work the next day. Dang got upset, and without saying another word, he went upstairs to her parents' bedroom. After hanging out for a bit, Lee went upstairs to bid her dad goodbye. She knocked on the door. Hey dad, I'm going home now. After there was no response, she knocked again, then twisted the doorknob, but it was locked. She thought it strange since her dad never locked the door. Lee knocked again, then called out. Hey dad, I'm leaving now. I just wanted to say bye. I'll see you next time. After there was no response, she told her mom, Zua, that her dad had locked the door. They went to the door, and her mom started to knock and try the doorknob. Sure enough, it was locked. Zua called out, Old man, open the door. What are you doing? Why did you lock the door? Open the door. Again, there was no response. Zua kept knocking and rattling the doorknob, but it was no use. Then she said, I don't know why the door is locked. Your father never locks the door. I know this is strange, but hey mom, I have to go. Just tell dad I said goodbye and that I'll see him next time I come over, Lee said to her mom. She hugged her mom goodbye, then descended down the stairs. Sua continued trying to get the door open for about 10 minutes to no avail. Since her husband wasn't responding, she started to get worried. They were both nearly 70 now and weren't as healthy as they used to be, especially her husband who had been constantly plagued by illnesses as of late. Suddenly, Zua heard the doorknob rattle. She quickly turned the knob and found that it was unlocked. Her husband was still on the bed snoring. Old man, why did you lock the door? She yelled. Dang awoke from his slumber, looking confused. Huh? Why'd you lock the door? Zua asked. I don't know what you're talking about. I never locked the door, Dang said. If you didn't lock the door, then who did? She asked. I don't know. As much as she did not want to believe him, she knew he was telling the truth. There was no way he could have moved that fast. She was creeped out and almost did not want to enter the room. She called Lee to tell her, and they also spooked her out. Until this day, they still can't explain what happened. The family has never experienced anything unusual at the house until that incident. Their new house. Fu and his family moved from Minnesota to North Carolina after finding a decent home on a 10 acre lot. He purchased it at a great price. It was an older home, constructed in the 1950s. It needed some repairs, but the plot of land sold him on it. Vu made the necessary repairs with help from his relatives in North Carolina, then moved his family in. Up until that time, the family had only been renting, so everyone was excited about having a place of their own for once. The space was an added bonus for their three kids. The house also came with an old piano. Some of the keys needed to be retuned, but other than that, it wasn't in bad shape. The family lived there without issues for about a month. Then one night, when Dylan, their 10-year-old son, got up to use the bathroom in the middle of the night, he heard footsteps behind him out in the hallway as he stood peeing in front of the toilet. Startled, Dylan turned to see who it was, but saw no one. The footsteps sounded like they were headed toward the stairs. He was spooked and didn't bother to follow the sound of the footsteps. He finished quickly, washed his hands, and ran back into him and his brother's bedroom. On another night, Kayla, their eldest daughter, was in her room studying and got hungry, so she went into the kitchen and made herself a sandwich. On her way back to her room, she heard the dishes clattered on the dish rack. It made her jump, but she brushed it off, thinking the dishes were just stacked unevenly, which caused them to shift. Shortly after that, when Kayla was up late studying again, she went into the kitchen to reheat some leftovers. While she waited on the microwave, Kayla played on her phone. At that instant, the kitchen faucet turned on by itself. Kayla looked up and 
a chill ran down her spine. As scared as she was, Kayla hid it well. Kayla went over to the sink and turned off the water. The microwave beeped, and she took out her plate of food, then grabbed a fork as she made her way quickly back to the room. She didn't even bother turning off the light. As time went on, the kids started to hear increasing amounts of strange noises and happenings around the house, like a blur flashing by in the hallway or a room. The sound of footsteps in the hallway and staircase at odd hours of the night. Sometimes even the piano would play by itself. Bruce's kids told him and his wife about the incidents. At first they didn't believe them, but with the hauntings happening so frequently, even they started experiencing it as well. On several occasions, their five-year-old son, Charlie, reported seeing an old man walking around the house. One time he said the old man was playing the piano. Charlie also said the piano room was where the old man hung around the most. One night, Vu had a dream of seeing the old man. In his vision, Vu had just gotten back from work when he heard the piano. At first he was confused because no one in his family knew how to play the piano. After putting his keys and lunchbox on the kitchen counter, Vu stepped into the piano room. He was shocked upon seeing the stranger in his home. It was an elderly white man who was probably in his mid-70s. He was playing a song that was foreign to Vu, but he could sense the sadness within the melody. Who are you, and what are you doing in my house? Vu shouted over the music. The old man didn't even acknowledge him. He had his eyes closed the whole time as he continued playing the sorrowful melody. Vu shouted again, this time waving his hand in the old man's face. Hey! Again, there was no response. He grabbed the old man's shoulder, and the song stopped, but his eyes were still closed. At that moment, the old man's features began to change right before Vu's very eyes. His lively face turned pale and gray along with the rest of his skin. His eyes and cheeks sank. A dark ring formed around his eyes. His blank expression turned into a menacing scowl. Vu's hand began to quake from fear as he slowly pulled it back. Suddenly, the old man's head snapped toward Vu, his eyes and mouth wide open, revealing a set of cold, dead eyes and black, rotten teeth. Vu stumbled backwards and fell on his ass. Before he knew what happened, Vu shot up from his bed, realizing it had only been a dream. His wife was still sound asleep next to him. He checked his phone. It was 3.06 a.m. Vu rubbed his eyes and felt a draft coming from the door. He hadn't noticed it before, but the bedroom door was opened. He got out of bed and closed it. He tossed and turned, but couldn't go back to sleep. The next day, he told his wife about it, and she agreed he should consult with a shaman. That afternoon, during lunch, he called a shaman to look into the hauntings. The shaman called him back after he got off work. The shaman said, The old man was one of the previous owners. He passed away at the hospital. He didn't know where to go, so he came back home. But his wife was gone. He has been waiting for her ever since. You must give him an offering and tell him to go his own way. Tell him it is no longer his house and that his wife will not return, so he cannot wait around for her there. That weekend, Vu did as the shaman told him. He burned some incense and joss money, saying the words exactly as the shaman instructed him to. Ever since then, the hauntings ceased, and the old man was never heard from again.